It ain't I, her real name. When she dropped Ponda Replay to me, it was over with. And fuck Ponda Replay. It's <laughs> the uh, there's a song on her album called um, If It's Loving That You Want. <laughs> it's the best Rihanna song. Have you ever heard it? Y'all ever heard it? No. Okay, before we get out of here, I'm gonna play it at the end of this. <laughs> okay. So a reminder for 30 minutes from now, for not 30. So a reminder for 15 minutes from now, play If It's Loving That You Want by Rihanna. <laughs> I can't. This is the best fucking Rihanna song ever. It's on the right. first fucking project. We did. What is up and welcome to another episode of The Miseducation of Music. You are here with Jay Treb as always, but today I have a special guest in the building, man. I have not only the vocalist, not only the guitar player, not only the self-proclaimed proclaimed town crier, bro. I have the amazingly talented, the multi-talented Kari Henri in the building, man. So it's up to the beat. What the fuck is up, yo? <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, man, we gotta dive in when we do those intros, bro. I gotta, I gotta put all of your shit in there so they know, you know, like, you are bona fide, you're established, <laughs> G. Like, come on, man, I've heard your guitar playing, and it's just so amazing. I've heard your vocals on your music and some of your siblings' music, and it's been so great. So it's so dope to have you on the show today and just to pick your brain, G. Man, that is... That's love, for real. <laughs> See? Hey, man, I love music, man, and I'm glad I get to dive into it, G. I kind of just want to start off, you know, we were a little talking off cam. I feel like we already chopping it up and chilling. So I just kind of want to ask, like, man, how did you get started in music? Like, you got siblings who do music, so I'm assuming that's got something to do with it. But, like, how did you get into this for yourself? Man, it's a little bit of everything. Like, I always be saying it. I always be saying, because my last name Jackson, and it was mm -hmm. five of us, and I was Oh, yeah, y'all was ready for it. Y'all so was like, bro. So I always had to sing Michael <laughs> growing up type It was like, bro, I was the only one with the range. Yeah, so it was funny to me that I was the last nigga to start making music out of everybody, <laughs> because I was kind of always the nigga in the front singing type shit. Yeah. Like, uh, in church and shit, like all that type shit. Oh, but, church, okay. Now, yeah. I understand it. That's how everybody got involved in all of this music. <laughs> it makes so much sense. But it's funny, though, because it's like... Um, like, I really took a long separation from it. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't really get back into it till like, I really started, like, you know, like, the, the really the pandemic, actually. Wow. Like, that was when I first started picking up the guitar and shit. Or really, ukulele. I was mm -hmm. bored as fuck. So this started off, you okay, hold on, let's wind it, wind it back just a little bit, man. So so what came first? Like, was it, so the vocals, obviously, you were doing that as a shorty. Did you ever, like, take it, like, super serious? Were you in some choirs and stuff um, like that? Or yeah, making your yeah. own music, singing? Yeah, I was in, a, like, show choir, like, one year in high school. Show choir, okay, I cool. used to do plays and shit. Like, me and my mama did this play back when I was in fifth grade. Like, that type of shit. It, it, That's awesome. My oldest <laughs> sister was an actress, so I kind of... It's funny because I kind of follow everybody. But you had at you had times. like so many avenues to go through. Yeah, like because like. uh, Zion probably told you my oldest brother Nate a wrestler. He ran, he just beat the number one ranked dude in the world a couple weeks back. I wrestled in high school. That's awesome. No, I didn't even know that. That's <laughs> wild, bro. So all of you all are just insanely talented. Just that's just the thing in the career. Man, that's good. That's so dope, though. It's, so it was the acting and the singing at first. Like, but how did that transform over to, you know, eventually picking up this ukulele? Yeah, it was, um, it was funny though. Cause it was like, um, because you, during the pandemic, everybody had to like sit down and not do the yeah. shit. That's, that's they regular, like little hamster wheel type Time shit. Time to learn some new, uh, some yeah, new Yeah, like literally <laughs> it was like, okay, over the summer, I'll usually be doing this, that, and the other. Um, I was the class of 2020. I was, I graduated from college in 2020. Yeah. So it was like. Damn. What am I supposed to do with damn, life right see? now? <laughs> like, oh, damn, that's felt too deep. Nah, for real though. Cause so I must have um I wrestled the state tournament. I get back. <clears throat> My birthday is March 18th. Mm -hmm. Last week Shout of school. Shout out 318, the project. <laughs> Shout out 318. <laughs> yeah, literally, um, 318, uh, that bitch closed down. So, like, one of my cool ass math teachers give me a little happy birthday early in school, and then I'm it's like fuck is we doing now? And yeah. I just remember, I, I was like, really on some like, healing my inner child shit, like in 2020. I feel like a lot of people were and, like, and that, that just led you to be yeah. like, I need a fucking ukulele right yeah, now. Yeah, like, it was this like, one, I was, <laughs> my inner child wants a ukulele, it's time to go. Cartoons like, and video games and oh, shit. Oh, that a little Spongebob? Little like, spon yeah, little, you like, know what I'm saying? Um, and when you, yeah, and, and it got to the end of that, I was just like, I was just on it until I started obsessing with it and shit. And then me and my brother was like, fuck it, like, might as well grab a guitar at this point. 
<laughs> I don't know if those two things are that related to other people, man. I think that might come from the creativity that y'all have in the crib. Maybe. Because you said, like, I'm going to do this little hobby, but you've turned it into music. I mean, like, you've turned this into released projects, man. So from it's, that ukulele, you got a guitar that, in that first project, is so acu- acoustically beautiful when the tracks where you use that guitar and let it shine. Took a lot of takes. I ain't go front. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, the final product is beautiful. But, <laughs> nah, it's, it's gee, I, I'm running blank now because it's funny when you put it like that. It's mm-hmm. like, I guess for me, it kind of felt like, because um, even just like, I felt like the years leading up to me actually really committing to like put some shit down. I was kind of shadowing like a lot of people around me and just like in the feel of it. Mm-hmm. So I remember saying like to myself at a while, like, I know I'm doing music at some point, but it got to like, it got to feel like me before I can do it. Mm. And I just didn't have anything. Like, I didn't have anything to say, I felt like. So, wow, wait, hold on. That's interesting. So, <laughs> y- your entire purpose behind it was, your entire purpose from waiting was that you just felt like you didn't have anything to say. Yeah, that was the That's biggest thing. So, what what made that turn? Because, and I mean, so for those people <laughs> at home who are listening now, uh, last year, you dropped 318 at the top of the year, <laughs> which is a, a nice project, great package, great intro to you. And then you gave us another one with chapter 20 at the end, like not even the end, it was like the middle of the year. So you went from not having anything to say or not feeling like you had a story to having two projects worth of stories, bro. So how how did it kind of hit you? Was there like a revelation point that was like, oh, it's time to get the story written? I ain't gonna lie, them shits was journal entries. Like wow, okay. Like like that's the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. Was like literally each song. Yeah, it's like it's like I don't journal no more because I write. And mm-hmm. it's it's funny because it was like it was like yeah it was what it was like I figured out what it was I wanted to say because you start to it starts to hit you like man this is the shit that's actually heavy on you type shit yeah. and I think that's when it started like I started to get a little bit of weight behind it for for me because it's like this shit I never knew how to communicate before I really started to write mm-hmm. like um, even that track rain and shit it's like I talk about. Sort of everything troubling me, everything important to me, everything that motivate me, yeah. and like my outlook on it. And I kind of just speed run the shit. Like I'm, oh I'm yeah, just, straight I'm, through. Trust just, me. <laughs> I, I think I mentioned it in when I asked you to come on the show because I like I vividly remember seeing you perform this. Like not even just the the like performance at the show. Which shout out to Zion for throwing the show at Book Club. <laughs> it was really dope, man. He had me come out and host. Like everybody who was on that docket was amazing. And you being on there, like I heard this during sound check. And I remember I was sitting next to Adia and Jesse, and I was like, holy shit. Like, that's not what it sounded like in my headphones. Like, just hearing you go in on the song live gives it an entirely different experience. Like, that's when I'm like, oh, shit. Like, he's running through everything, and it's just going and going, and you just get, like, enthralled with the work. And it's so funny because I started it on some silly shit. Like... Because you know that beat had been like trending on TikTok. Yeah, it shit. was like a was, trending sound, the interpolation and the sample of like, Rainbow. I was SMV. like, hey, nobody really did nothing on this motherfucker yet. Like, just like, people dancing. Yeah, just <laughs> motherfuckers dancing like some like, in, in, in no shade, but like some weak ass <laughs> Yeah, of course. And I then mean, I was just like, yo, people like. People hitting those uh, some couple weak 15 second TikTok bars. Yeah, over the top. bro. And I was like, let me do some shit to it. So I started just writing and I was like, damn, wait. Like you ever have a I think damn I a song? <laughs> yeah, you ever have, you ever have a damn wait moment where I was like, I ain't in like, I don't know. I feel like when I'm really writing some shit that's personal to me or whatever, I get a moment where I'm like, whoa, like I I feel like I just had a breakthrough type shit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like my favorite part of the process is you start to like. You start to learn what your language is for shit. You're like, I think I just said this in the best way I know how. Yeah. It's like hitting hitting that personal ceiling of where it's like, that's my limitation. Like, I just gave that everything I can give it. Yeah, but it, it, it's double too. It's like, I think I just said what I needed to hear. Mm-hmm. And that's, um, and, and you were saying earlier, like, like uh, before, like off camera, like, um, like, you know, like, you don't know uh, how rappers like listen to that shit, like yeah. after the fact. For me, sometimes it'd be like, Yo, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I went hard on that. Motherfucker needed to hear this shit. Like, this shit, 
Like, here, even hearing your own voice back, when you say it's something as deep as, like, a journal entry, I imagine you yeah. hearing it back, it's like you can almost reflect back. Exactly. But like, that, Couldn't that make it harder in some cases, though? If you're talking about bit. something that's, like, a little difficult. And, I mean, like, you're putting this much of yourself in music. I kind of want to ask, like, why? Because, I mean, you, you held <laughs> off for so long saying you didn't have anything, and then you literally are giving it your all. Like, the emotion is there in the music. Like, you, you're almost holding nothing back. So it's like... How do you, I mean, like, how do you even go back and hear that yourself? Like, that's deep as hell. I think you just caught it, too, because it was a very, like, do or die moment type shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I was saying, um, like, Secrets was the first shit I'd ever made. Yeah. And I was literally just on the guitar, like, fiddling around. Then I, like, came up with the melody that hell, like, come tell me, uh, like, that shit, right? Somebody calling me. I'm going to hit him back later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was funny because it was, like, um... Smooth just lost where I was at. It was funny because I, I tapped into it and I was like, damn, wait, like, this is a feeling I haven't been able to communicate for a really long time, mm -hmm. but that's like been present. Yeah. And I felt like it was really important to put that shit out there because like... You had to get it off your chest type shit. Yeah, it's almost like people also, feel like they had to say something. And also, <laughs> like, one of my favorite rappers is, like, Earl Sweatshirt. Nice. Right? Yeah. And he had projects like... Like, it's a shit called, like, Silas, which is just, like, this 10-minute, like, shit on YouTube. Uh, you you know, come on, man. You I'm tapped in. He like, tapped bro, in. I was there er early yeah, days bro. on a Future Wolf gang. Seventeen year old <laughs> Kari was crying to that motherfucker. I like, feel that, like bro. deep G. And I was like, bro, it's crazy when motherfuckers like say some shit that's so real and transcends words in a way that like that literally it's like tapped into something that 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 help you to like understand sort of like what you need a mm. little bit. And so, like, and that's from like a self-reflective standpoint. I'm yeah, assuming. like even that's on like awesome a, to hear within your own music. Yeah, because I know music gives me that feeling, but I'm always like, did the artist feel that way, or did they just go in here and kind of go through the motions of giving me just their life? Yeah, really and that's that's what it is, bro. Like that's what it is that that made it real. Is mm -hmm. I, I felt like I couldn't put in words like that epiphany that made me say, "Fuck that, this is real." But it was like, oh, like. This is the shit that makes me listen to music. Like that it was, This is the it, reason why I enjoy yeah. music. So, so why would I not recreate that? And so that's I would awesome. I would never make music if it weren't for me first. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the real. Like, so honestly, and I was jokingly saying, I was dead serious saying Vulture was the first time I even tried to rap. But I was like hilarious. Cause I'm just like, bro, that shit go up. <laughs> but I was like, yo, like. Fuck that. Like, I need rap. Like, I, I need to hear some rap. <laughs> it was like, I feel like I can only get this emotion out if I rap right here. Yeah, you know so what I'm saying? So I gotta put these words in so here. I, I gotta, gotta challenge myself so, to put it in there. And there was a lot of motherfucking trash-ass drafts to that song guitar. I pulled that shit together. Like, that's, that's what makes it great, though. Yeah. I know the difference between a song where I can tell that somebody put their heart in it and their emotions, and they were like, yo, I gave you everything I had right here, uh, as opposed to somebody just going out here saying, this is gonna work. And I say it all the time, like, I like every fucking thing. Like, I might like songs from each section, yeah. or I might dislike songs so from each section. We got Paramore like, in the phones, we got Dirk in the phones, we oh, got yeah. Frank let's, in let's, the phones. Let's talk about that. What'd you grow up on, man? Because <laughs> I'd love to know the inspirations that can give us the, oh the degrees of songs, from like a rain to a vulture, you know, <sighs> to even these small clips I've been hearing on your story of you working with people like Jay and Sandy <laughs> and all of these things, bro. Like, I've been hearing these, and it's like, you have so many lanes like what was the inspiration what were you listening to in your headphones back yeah, then? every i don't like i had a lot of siblings and a lot of parents you, yeah you said you were the youngest so it's like bro you were getting everybody's Everything. everybody's music like so everybody's my, eras so my oldest kiwi uh kiela she'll be black she'll she'll be playing the uh damn destiny's child and beyonce okay. and shit uh nate uh, swears by Drake to this day. Oh, so he was but, early adopter. But he was the early, yeah, early he was he was an OG or shit. Wave. My fucking cold play, he loved them niggas too. Oh man, um, hey, clocks though, that's my jam. Like, yeah, man, bro, on, I ain't gonna lie. Like, like, I rediscovered. It's one of those songs where it's like you turn it on, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm here for it. Just I rediscovered that shit like a couple, like maybe like last year. I was like, this is. Filthy. Bang. Even Viva La Vida doesn't like it yeah. got a lot of commercial play, but it's, it's like, bro, fuck, if you bro. go back and just listen, you're like, yo, this is a great fucking song. Like, um, Frida Cash for listening to every fucking thing. Yeah, but, I believe that. But but she 
Well, she was the plug on like a like Lil Wayne and shit, like fucking grimy, dirty ass rap Hell in yeah. the Ross way, but also like hella rock shit. Like, I feel like me and all the boys in the family had a, had a secret relationship with her, sneaking off and listening to fucking My Chemical Romance. It's like and everybody shit. got their like fill yeah. of you know, like Welcome to the Black Parade. Yeah, and, but you know, know, but you know, niggas ain't listening to rap. I mean, I did, but I, but, I went okay. to Catholic school. Let me put so it like it was this, just like, bro. When I was in school, it was very few people who were black. <laughs> I like heard this, it because there was no choice. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie. I realized that uh, almost every black person I know was a closeted rock fan. Yes. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I'm just glad that we're all saying it out loud I'm now. I'm glad we hear like, it. Like, the fact that I go on TikTok and it'll be something like, oh, black people have always loved Paramore. Hey. I'm like, yes, we've always yes, we loved always Paramore. And well, just, I've loved Haley Williams since I was a kid. What are you talking about? <laughs> when she did that crossover with B.O.B., I was like, finally, everyone can know who she is. Oh, God. Like, bro. But also, black people made rock at the end of the fucking we day. Like, all fuck of it, it man. Like, Fuck it, bro. Like, this We've our shit We've been in this music shit way. since it was music, yeah, bro. bro, fuck. It's like, there's no genre you can do that we that we will not find something we like inside of it. Yeah, so it's funny, though, because, like, I feel like I listen to everything and nothing at the same time. Like, yeah. I be way out of the loop on some, on some shit that I should know about. It's like, oh, everybody in my age group knows this song. But, like, like I ain't I'm find stuck out about the Funkadelics. <laughs> Yeah, like I didn't find out about Don Tolliver until like last year, oh, and I man, was I'm like, "Sorry, you should." And I was like, "What the sooner. fuck was I doing?" Yeah, somebody should have told you sooner. Now, that was just a little sad. Whoever, whoever was gatekeeping the Don Tolliver for my man, that was ignorant. That was ignorant, bro. Like, but also, like, was real deep on underground shit and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think those kind of played a role in how you approached the the mic? Because, I mean, like, what you're naming is every genre has, like, different subsects inside of it. They have the right. stuff that's for everybody, the stuff that's just for the fans. They got the stuff that's, like, super hard deep dives. Like, where did you find yourself along the lines in there? I guess my thing is, and it's kind of the way I think in general, is, like, I like to try to find the common thread through shit. Okay. So it's, like, if I could, like, the shit, all of my favorite songs in any fucking genre, damn near, like, all the time, is the ones with motherfuckers are just mad emotive. Like, it's man, like, give me everything. I don't yeah, care if it's happy. Me, I don't give care me if it's what sad. you got. G. <laughs> Even if it's the fucking apathy. Like, that's what's funny yeah. that I love about drills. Like, yo, I cannot do that nonchalant shit. Like, yeah. that shit raw is fuck, right? And it's like, how do you exude that? Like, how do you, how you exude you... that while you talking about stomping the nigga shit? For real? Right? And they be chill as hell. I mean, yeah. like, just thinking about people like from the uh, from the city who carry tones like that. Like, Flex Sinatra is one of those people in the city where like yeah. he has that kind of like monotone flow. And I'm like, bro, you are rapping some hard ass <laughs> bars. And I would have, to, I'd be in the studio screaming this shit. <laughs> but it's like, that's why I'm not a rapper. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. It's like, hey, look, there's a there's a something that's being held on to in this shit. Like, the thing I was really happy with myself with in chapter 20, like when I first made uh, Wind, it's the intro to the project. Yeah. I was like, this bitch started on some like chill cadence into some like, into some real hype shit, into like some borderline like singing melodic type shit. Yeah. But it's all in this. It gives it like an interlude feel. Like it's like this is what you're going into the project. It's like yeah, a, like it's like get ready, prepare your ears. In. You're gonna yeah. see everything here. And that's my favorite <laughs> shit to do also. I realize I do that at every project. I'm like I need to give them a, a, a taste of you everything. You need an overture. It's yeah. like, that's, that's what you see in, like, a lot of plays and stuff. Like, if you go to, like, a play, that song mm. they play before everything just has overture. a piece like of every song. Word. Yeah. The overture of musicals is usually, like, my favorite part. Like, when it's starting, and you're just like, I can hear each piece. Yeah, and for me, it's like, hey, don't be surprised. Mm-hmm. I like surprise. I don't. I don't like surprises, but I like making people surprised. <laughs> you like the creation of surprises. I like the creation of surprises. You don't like the action. I don't really fuck with surprises, <laughs> but be surprised. But don't be don't don't be turned off by nothing because if you yeah. got through this, you should have been ready for that. Exactly, and man, look that that brings me right to my next point. You making my transitions for me. I want to talk about these projects you drop, man. <laughs> like they they have such a beautiful cadence about them when you listen, where it's like you don't even have like no shuffle. You can just go straight through, and it's a nice listen on both projects. I feel like you're very good at creating that soundscape there. What what was the the purpose behind these? And I do want to talk about the newer ones. So let's talk about Chapter Twenty a little bit more. Um, because chapter 20, I kind of want to know, like, what's the purpose behind that, even though you also dropped a birthday project for that same age? 
Like, I got to talk about 318. Okay, no, no, no. Do it then. Do it then, bro. Don't say, let me. No, if you got to talk about yeah. that when it gets to this one, do it, bro. 318 was like the first time, and this is the reason I dropped it on my birthday. Uh, Zion can tell you that shit shouldn't have been out on my birthday. He was like, oh, wow, you finna make me mix this shit this fast. Hey, but y'all did it. But we pulled it out. You got fans. You got, I'm a fan of the mixing as well as the music, bro. <laughs> y'all killed it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, 318 was extremely, basically, so so 2020, and or the pandemic, was spent deeply me healing my inner child. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I sort of realized, like, I've been living a lot of my life on autopilot. It's another reason why I hadn't really been able to make music, because I really hadn't had many experiences. Yeah. Like, I didn't have many friends, never been involved romantically, like, none of that shit, like... So the things people usually will pull from, I'm just like... It's like, that's not my pool. There's nothing there. Yeah. And I'm not... I can't invent shit. Like yeah. That's, it's like, I'm not here to make up fantasy rap. Yeah. Like, to me, an artist is channeling shit and finding a way to express what they're channeling. Yeah. But you can't just... It's like law of uh, conservation of mass. Like, there's mm-hmm. never something without something. Right? Yeah. And I mean, like, that, I agree with that even in the standpoint of, like, people who create fiction. Like, it yeah. has a basis That's, in something real. Fiction be the realest shit. It is. Because it's like, <laughs> this is actually just a mirror. This is a mirror to whatever they were really thinking, which is yeah, crazy. for real. Um, drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Mick Jenkins. Um, oh, definitely, bro. <laughs> um... But yeah, I spent so much of the pandemic really just tapping into what things I care about, shit, shit I'm sensitive to, shit that make that like make little me smile. Like my screensaver is a picture of me as a little kid because that's yeah, like yeah. that was like the damn mission statement, right? So three eighteen was extremely. I'm letting go of the baggage of my of growing up. Like that was the whole idea of it, mm-hmm. and it was like bits and pieces of it in different ways. It's like. Satisfied is like on some real vulnerable, like, like, like that's literally like some like some like falling out with motherfucker, like like with with your with people hold you up type shit. Yeah. But it's just the energy is some shit a lot of people can relate to. Vultures, like all that shit is like this this like heavy fucking like shit I need to let go of type shit. Secrets is like all of that like. Secrets. I mean, it's the it's, it's the <laughs> it's literally it's secrets. Yeah, it's like the shit you don't let out for real. The shit like the shit you scared to show people type shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's very like that project was extremely like 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 on some shadow work shit. Like just kind of just like let let just like let it bleed out for a minute. Yeah. So chapter was, twenty was that's ex- just the first thing you had to get out. Yeah, of you. and chapter twenty was like, all right, where we at now? Like, mm-hmm. like. This was what what this is what got me to to age twenty. Mm-hmm. I'm twenty now. Now I want to create a reflection of it yeah. that that is more like let me dig deeper it's than current. just and also, my it, emotional baggage right yeah, now. Yeah, and also like and things. also it's current. It's my current outlook. Like mm-hmm. I was actually twenty when I wrote chapter twenty. I was yeah. nineteen when I wrote three eighteen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it it was a very like. Like, like that's what's funny. It, it, it's funny that you pointed out like that because, like, yeah, that was kind of the point. Is like, it's like chapter twenty was extremely well. This is purposeful now. I want to build. Like, I want. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out what I need right now because I need to build a life that I want to. That I want to wake up to. Mm-hmm. So that's like you know, like that. That's that's why Garnish is the outro. It's like we we great fucking song. Thank you. Just a great. Now, I got a question here. I ask this question to every <laughs> single artist who comes on the show, but I feel like I have to know yours because of the way you're doing this. You said that 318 did have some stress being fast and loose, and then you also had this like time period to breathe while creating Chapter 20, and now you're really not stressing the space mm-hmm. in this next one where you're like, I might take three weeks to work on a track. What do you do to take care of your creativity in between these things? So like, you know, like how do you foster it? How do you make sure that when you come up to that microphone, when you're like making a beat or when you get your guitar, like you have the creative energy to expend on the project? Like when you're doing a lot. <laughs> I guess for me, what I kind of taught myself to do is just not stress about the result of everything I do. Mm-hmm. It's like I just start. Okay. I'll start every day and I'll give it like an hour type shit. Mm-hmm. And then it'd be like, 
Like literally, er, um, every time I'm writing a verse, if I if I pull up blank, I close my phone notes up that I was writing it in. It's like oh, it's not today. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I fuck around do it again if I feel like it. But I go go somewhere, make myself something to eat, drink some motherfucking tea, listen to some music. I don't listen to enough music. I need to do that shit more That's often. That's actually really. A lot of people say they don't listen to artists. Other music artists when they don't try listen to, listen to music. music. It's like, artists, bro. I swear I to it. God, niggas who make music do not listen to music like That's that. So funny. It's so funny because it's like, yo, we. Ear fatigue is a bitch, bro. <laughs> it's got to be at the same time, though, because I feel like it, if, if you're making music all day and then you got to go home and listen to music, you were yeah. talking about how, like, you were listening to things with such a critical ear after working on your projects that you had to, like, kind of find that, like, snap yeah, back to, like, real yo, life enjoy this. Detox like, stop, stop being critical of someone else's mix. Like, you, you real life got to detox some shit. I was like, I was, I was fucking, I was real happy I went to that Mavi show with my, with my homies a couple weeks back because I was just like, damn, I'm just like, in somebody else's creative energy, like that's, so. That's is that like a recharge for you? Like, do you yeah, feel more inspired is. being in? It is completely because it frees you from like that, like like from yourself. Kind you of don't way. have any responsibility in this space, but music yeah. will still happen. And also, <laughs> yeah, and also it it like makes things occur to you differently. Like for me, it's like I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. And the thing I love about working with other artists or just seeing other artists in their process is you notice that they pay attention to different shit than you do. Oh, yeah. Like Somebody's like, yo, I'm, I'm over here focused on my ad-libs. You focus on your main yeah, verse. And then exactly. it's like, oh, well, that's why your music sounds this way because you focus a lot yeah. on these things. And, and it's I like, focus on these. And it's like, damn. It's like, it's <laughs> like uh, I, I remember being like, yo, yo, bridge is just fucking, like, yo, bridge is just fucking hard. And I'm over here, because with me, when I was first writing, learning how to write, I was like, I need to get my fucking flow together, and then I need to get my fucking lyrics together. And I want my, I want my, I want my flow to be so seamless that I could go anywhere, and it go without yeah. me having to fucking like... I don't have to force it into yeah, this Yeah, exactly. Type. So I was real deep under that. Mm -hmm. And I realized... Damn, nigga said so many damn words to even do all this cool shit you doing right now. <laughs> so I'm like, oh wow, I can I can talk a little bit less. It's like I kind of gave myself some freedom in figuring out how yeah. to do this because now I know my structure. Like that's really yeah. awesome. And so and so that that's I think that that nurtures you creatively in general mm -hmm. is just finding more and more ways to be around other creators who who ain't you like for real. And also shit detoxing like. Do like do not do it until you hate it. Just step the fuck away from it yeah. until you're like, I have to go back to it now. Like, like I have to. It is shit, now my life. Do force. it while you like it. Do it while you enjoying it, bro. Why mm -hmm. you enjoying it? Say my ears are getting tired. I need to close this. Yeah. So you will. So you'll fucking be fiending for a later. Save that a little bit. Yeah. So you just be like, oh, I'm itching for it. That's the good shit, bro. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, because I mean, especially <laughs> if you if it is a treat for you. Exactly. Like, if it's no, a treat for exactly. you, you, gotta tr you have to like you have to use it as such. You can't like be like, ah, oh, this is something I love so much. So let me do it till I hate it. <laughs> no, nah, that's funny because um because back when I used to wrestle, I remember uh, my brother was saying like, hey, yo, don't every single practice fucking kill yourself. Yeah, don't go hard all the time. Have, go, have something to have something even to Even go to. hard, but don't go to the point of wipe out. Because yeah. guess what? You ain't gonna try you ain't trying to do that shit tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Now, now your body is like tired and you yeah. can't even get in it. You gotta match the next day but you yeah, get all, all your practice. That shit, right? It's wild. So yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, it's it's literally do everything it takes to enjoy the fucking process. Cause if you enjoy shit, you make excuses to do it. Man, I, that's that is real life. I make excuses to do the things I love all I'm the sorry, time, bro. I'm like, yo, all as time. a non-smoking nigga, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I cannot make sense of how much money motherfuckers be spending on that shit. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, man, they gonna figure that shit out though, because they like that oh, shit. Oh, trust me, they always they gonna out. figure that shit out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up, man. That's so awesome just to hear like how you reflect on your own creativity. Like that's really cool that you still you know get to view it as this treat and you use it as such a tool for yourself, man. And like I think that's, that's really what I've gotten from you, Dan. I'm so glad you shared this story with me. Just your story of everything, man. I appreciate you, bro. I do want to ask before we get out of here, man. What is up next? You mentioned a project. Should we be looking for that in 23, or you don't know it's gonna drop when it drops, man? What's happening? It will drop when it drops. Mm -hmm. My projections is 
late spring, early summer type shit. Okay, so we got a season for everybody yeah. out there. We got a season to but, look forward but to. But it'll drop when it drops. That's like, awesome, and I'm assuming more performances too, man. Because let man. me tell you, if you've not seen a performance <laughs> yet, y'all need to get out and go see Car. Man, Car- honestly, I'm. I don't. I ain't got shit playing right now, but. Anything that hit my line, I damn near want to be at type shit. Like I'm a for sure. You know I'm a boost that. Shit. Like like I'm man, a, you go crazy. I will man. not shut up about it if it's going, bro. Hell yeah, the promotion, man. Let me tell you, G. That's another thing. Let me just commend you on your self promotion before we get out of here too. I don't know why niggas don't do it, man. I I don't either. I do it. I told you about how I do my stories, yeah, bro. bro. I man, I will tell you that I made some shit because I really want you to go look at exactly, it. Exactly, bro. <laughs> but um. But yeah, singles on the way for sure. Definitely. I got I got hella little seats. Okay, like, hey, look, that I just gotta get my damn. You know what I'm saying? I, I gotta make sure I do it right. But I got hella little seats right hell now. Yeah, man. Look, well, hey, man. While everybody is out there looking for these singles, it's on the way. What outro track should we leave them with from your library? You get to put them on to any song on this outro from you yourself. They're not just gonna go in iTunes and find a random one. Which one do they need to hear? Shit, right. Rain, hey, look, man. Well, you all are here. Rain playing so, in the background. Simple, Thank you so much, Kari, for coming on the show. Anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Man, if I get out of here, shout out his Zion. Shout out Free to Cash Flow. Shout, shout out. out Jay Insanity. Man, shout out all the fucking amazing fucking creatives I met in the last year or so. Shout out, shout out Pat Tagging. Shout out Zeus Guap. Shout out Lee Mosh. Shout out. Um, shout out. No, keep <laughs> you know them going, bro. Keep them going, man. I know all of them, bro. <laughs> You going crazy. Shout out, uh, shout out, Dimple, formerly known yeah, formerly as Kareem. Known as Kareem. Shout, shout out, out. Dia. She was fucking. Shout out, Dia. Just met her. Shout ass. out, Jesse Fox. Man, we just shout, shout out, Jesse Fox. Yo, I was a That's shorty. Episode, my nigga, I was a shorty last time I seen Jesse Fox. You know, he just uh, he just did some work with Duckworth. He just modeled. Really? He just modeled. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was about That's to say if you go to if you go to raw, Duckworth's bro. IG right now, he is. He's on there. That's raw. I was a shorty last time I seen that nigga. I was so glad I got to perform in front of him. Shout out fucking, um, shout out Laura Dia, this girl in the UK. Raw as fuck. Shout Um, out. Raw as fuck, G. Shout out, um, shout out Lil Mars down in South Africa. One of, (laughs) one of my earliest collabs. Hell yeah. Shout out, um, shout out motherfucking C-Riz, my homie. Shout out, uh, damn. That's a lot of niggas to think about. Hey, man. Shout out to Jay, bro. That is what this shit is for. <laughs> if this show ain't for nothing, it's for shouting out the people who we appreciate in this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, Jay, bro. Shout out Pandora. Shout out Ajay. Shout out uh, Desi. Shout out uh, Randy. She fun. Um... Man, yeah, I'm forgetting some of these. Damn, bro, you got a lot of shout outs. Shout out to every fucking body. Shout out everybody. I'll say, man. end of the day, shout out every <laughs> fucking body who who I see grinding. Like, that's end of the day, I got love and respect for everybody who that's I so see awesome. moving this hard. Bro. That's so genuine. That's man. all it is, bro. Shit. Look, man, well, thank you so much, Carver, for coming on the show, man. <laughs> shout out to you. <laughs> I'm gonna shout you out as we head now, man. Look, Thank as, you, blood. As, we, as we are dipping out of here, shout out Jay Tran, hey, motherfucker. Thank you, thank you for the shout out. Thank you for the behind the camera shout out too, man. Look, while this episode is heading out, you all are hearing rain play in the background. Make sure you're peeping the podcast. Make sure you're playing this for your mama, your sister, your baby daddy, your baby mama. Play it for your cat. Play it for your house, man. Play this on your ride on the way to work, and then keep it going in your pocket while you at work, man. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Right this shit like Noah's like the I see signs of different stars. I know my mother stay adjacent with me. I ain't dying with no promises unkept. I know I'm selfish cause I'm self-reliant. Hard for me to trade on empty. Empty souls to keep a place for those they need, yeah.